Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC channel. In this video, I'm going to be unboxing a Losi Desert Buggy. It's a large buggy of one-fifth scale, ready to run the uh, DBXL uh, electric version, not the fuel version, and it's the 2.0 version, their latest. Um, it comes with a lot of Spectrum hardware. Uh, it comes with a DX3 radio. It comes with a Metal Gear Spectrum servo. Uh, it comes with a uh, Spectrum Firma 160 amp uh, smart ESC. In other words, it's got telemetry uh, and a uh, Spectrum Firma uh, four pole 780 kV brushless motor. Um, I also bought four uh, smart batteries for it. I figured I'd keep going with the Spectrum line. I've had good luck with their batteries. I've got several of their chargers. And so I bought four, um, 4S, because you can run this 8S, uh, 5,000 milliamp, uh, 100C smart Gen 2 batteries. So uh, it takes a pair of them uh, in line of each other. And uh, I also got a few little extras to tweak it. Um, I'm going to uh, go up a couple teeth on the pinion gear. I'm going to try the first run stock and then add a few little knickknacks. One of the things that I'm probably going to be adding uh, not right away is these sand tires. I got a set of four because I'm going to take it to the beach and uh, blast it around in the sand. And uh, this is what you want for like really loose mud or sand, anything of that nature, snow. Uh, hopefully we'll get some snow this winter and uh, I'll get to blast it around. I also got a, uh, a snow plow attachment in the hopes that we'll get some snow. And that's quite big. It's actually about this wide and oh, about so tall. It's quite the blade. So this should be a lot of fun. Um, but let's start by uh, getting it out of the box and seeing how it looks. So, partially because I'm trying to get ready for a move, I'm buying a house, uh, I'm buying another house uh, with more working area and a garage, as I mentioned in my uh, What's Happening video. And um, I have another box so big that I do not have table space for it. <laughs> so I've got to do this on the floor, on my hands and knees. So let's get into this box. See what we got going. I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah. <laughs> if that doesn't get your attention, nothing will. If you get one of these or anything like this, I highly recommend keeping these boxes. Um, hopefully you got an attic or a storage space somewhere because if you ever wanna sell it or if you have to do a big pack and move like I'm doing, having a, uh, a way to pack this thing so that you can, uh, you can get it uh, moved a little easier is really nice. See, there's not much to getting it out. Wow. I think these weigh about 36 pounds. Massive. Let's see what we got in here. Oops. Big wrench. Some double A batteries for the transmitter. Some wrenches, some stickers, and a manual. And in here, no doubt, is the radio.
there we go one dx3 i've got quite a collection of these going at the moment i've taken to uh using a uh a silver sharpie and writing on the transmitter somewhere sometimes like here sometimes across the bottom um i'll put down uh you know what vehicle it's for um definitely makes it a lot easier not having to wonder did i bring the right transmitter to the to the track just throwing the extra cardboard back in storage bin with some other stuff tomorrow. In the meantime, let's get a good look at this. We've got a major light bar here. It's interesting the way they hook that up. I think that's about it for the lights, which is fine. You can always add more if you want. Very realistic. We got two driver figures in there. This is definitely big enough to put a camera inside here for some. Uh, some of the drives so i'm definitely going to do that there's a, a company that uh, makes a lot of aluminum upgrade parts for these losi makes a handful but uh, these guys really go all out i've actually ordered a few of them already nice flip up body so here we have battery number one, battery number two. All the wiring is done for you. That's really nice the way they have these anchored down. Uh, easily removed, just take, a, uh, just take a wrench to it and you can pull those out. Um, very nice. Uh, now, one of the things I did get was a set of these two linkages here, uh, so they're adjustable um, and they're metal, stronger than these plastic ones. They have a teeny bit of flex to them. Um, this uh, plastic piece right here, this little deck, uh, those are known to crack. Um, so I picked that up in aluminum and uh, there are some nice pieces here that you don't need to replace. Um, that uh, like right off the bat, this uh, linkage right here, uh, the, the crossbar for the steering, that is aluminum. Um, likewise, the, uh, the horn here, the double-ended uh, servo horn is made out of aluminum and it's thick and beefy. And if we want to get a little extra steering out of it, they are currently in the middle uh, so we can move them out or in to get more or less uh, steering. Um, they have kits for uh, these linkages here. I wouldn't replace these. These are massive. Um, there's just no need. The, uh, the shock towers are already aluminum. Um, the shocks themselves are massive. Uh, I mean, this is a quality built truck here. And um, the uh, supposedly, it's all waterproof. Uh, the servo, the ESC, every, all the spectrum uh, stuff is, uh, is waterproof. Um, there's even a sealed box here for the uh, receiver. Um, things I am going to do. I am going to put uh, a much thicker center diff fluid practically off the bat. 
um, and I'm going to put a heavier one in the rear and a slightly heavier one up front. The reason being that you really want um, as much power going to both ends. Uh, if you don't have a really thick fluid up here, you end up with a front wheel drive truck. Um, because all the power will end up going to the front wheels unless it's standing on its, you know, on its hind wheels, in which case all the power is going out the back. Um, I'm going to be going with 1 million uh, weight fluid in the center, half mil in the rear, and 100,000 in the front. And I'll probably never need to change it after that unless I'm doing a rebuild, a cleanup, whatever. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it sits with batteries in it. Uh, right now it's got a little bit of rear sag. The front has no sag at all and it really need, it should be sitting a little lower. It should have a little bit of room to, to move. There should be some droop. Um, let me grab a couple of those batteries real quick. Another thing that you guys should be doing as a general rule of thumb is having uh, battery bags for every battery. It's great to have a big battery bag that holds all of them uh, or a bunch of them, but each one should be in its own bag. It, it's just safer, um, less chance of having some kind of cataclysmic. Okay, had a little distraction there. They give us some uh, little blocks here. Let's see if I can pull this out easily. Or I think they're kind of stuck in, but you can flip these around. Um, what it does is moves the battery a little bit in the tray. And there are some aftermarket uh, carbon fiber tray options. And uh, one thing that uh, some people do is they put on a, uh, uh, a lengthwise strap as well as the widthwise, uh, front to back as opposed to left to right. Again, I'm just putting these in here for weight to see how the car sits with the batteries in. Yeah, the front end is still pretty high. So let's try taking these adjusters all the way to the top. That's not a lot of droop, whereas the rear is much more. So I guess I'll kind of have to see what uh, what other options there are for moving things around. The batteries are as far forward as they can go. Um, 
Now, one of the things you can do, uh, and this is uh, made for it, if you notice there's extra space in the servo tray, um, you can actually uh, break off these little plastic uh, bars there. Uh, they're not heavily anchored. They're just uh, just molded in like a mold, uh, molding tree. And uh, you can put in dual servos and you would need to switch uh, this type of arm out for single arms, one to each side, and then adjust them so that they work together in unison which might be a little tricky, but it would mainly be some programming uh, and adjustments. But considering how, uh, how strong some of the servos are, for example, uh, the servo that I put in my um, one-fifth scale uh, crawler, um, that thing is massive. And I'm, I'm going to have to just live with this for a while and see how it goes because... It's a very good servo and it's all, all metal gears. So I really shouldn't have problems with it if it has the torque. Um, and I would assume that they spec this out well. Now, if I put bigger tires on it, which you can do and I will do, um, for example, I mean, these aren't much bigger. They are the same width. They're mounted to the same wheels. Um, but what you can do is get some little hub extenders. And this is like one of the first things a lot of people do with these uh, is widen it out a little bit. Now it does change your steering geometry slightly, but it does allow you to use big tires like these, which are a little shorter, but considerably wider. Um, the problem is the depth of the, uh, the inset. Uh, so that you've got, that's why you need those uh, extenders. But, you know, again, for the moment, I'm going to be using the stock wheels and either these stock tires or these paddle tires and uh, get to know it as it is. I am gonna look around to see if there are some lighter springs because these are, um, they're just too stiff. Um, there's no, well, I can lean the shock in because uh, it's in the middle hole. That might uh, uh, make it a little softer. Um, has front and rear sway bars. Everything on here is just beefy. Um, you know, these, uh, these arms, they, they don't, you know, it's not a standard, uh, uh, ball stud and, uh, ball cap where it snaps on over the top of it. You've actually got a bolt over here and a nut, a lot, and it's a, a nylon lock nut too. Um, so these things can't pop off. You'd actually have to break these plastic pieces to have these escape. It's, it's not like, uh, you know, some one-tenth or uh, even eighth scale where the, uh, the arm can pop off the ball stud. Um, that's not going to happen. Um, as I said, uh, there's a company that makes a lot of aluminum pieces. They make the steering. They make... Um, uh, these guys here, uh, the braces, um, that's another thing that can and does break on these. Um, so I may be upgrading those. And the, uh, the wing assembly back here, this whole back section here that mounts the wing, mounts the body, uh, that is available in aluminum as well. And uh, that is something that I may, uh, I may replace as well. Uh, makes the wing a lot stronger. Now, interestingly, I wasn't uh, doing those tests with the body on, so let's give that a try because that may, yeah. So when the body is on it, we get a little more front end droop. I'd still like to have a little more 
I think what I'll try is, is leaning the shocks in a little bit and see where that goes. Um, so we've pretty much covered this from front to back. The body's very sturdy. Um, the plastic itself isn't that thick, uh, but there's a, an inner cage structure that uh, the body panels mount to, as you can see here. Um, that makes it, you know, a much stronger uh, setup there. There's no real locking together, but there is a groove here and here that the body drops onto the pan here. Uh, now this looks like plastic, but this is just, uh, it's just add-on. We've actually got a very heavy duty aluminum chassis here. I think it's, uh, I think that's two mil aluminum. But uh, anyway, the body drops into those little grooves there. might get a set of the type of pins that have a little strap on them and uh, that you know mount it to the body so that I don't have to go looking for the pins don't lose them at some point it's a nice paint job I do like doing custom stuff, so at some point I may get a new set of body panels and paint them. There's a company that uh, makes them in carbon fiber, and they look just awesome. But that's a lot of money. I think it's in the order of like $400. Uh, the body panels, as it is, uh, not including the tail, just these few pieces here and... and they're not overly complicated. Um, they're 150 bucks. So uh, don't, don't, you know, trash your body too quickly if you can help it. Um, just seeing if there's anything interesting to show you underneath here. Nothing that you wouldn't expect. Big, big chassis. I mean, it. it's like any other RC car, just considerably larger. There's no surprises, nothing you haven't seen before. Um, the uh, front uh, steering knuckles um, are available in aluminum. That's definitely something that might be worth doing, especially if you're going to jump it a good bit or even at all um, I'll definitely be jumping it but it, you guys have seen what I do I, I don't take stuff to the the local skateboard park and see if I can destroy it I, I think that's just a waste it's you know they're so these things are expensive as can be um, I think it's around a thousand dollars and uh, you know if you got the money to beat your car to death and then throw more parts at it and trash it again or just buy two of them or whatever, you know, more power to you. But there are so many people out there that would love to just have the chance to have one of these. It's almost a shame to just destroy them for no real purpose other than to look at me. But that's me. Everybody gets to do what they want, so... Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something about this uh, this desert buggy. And uh, you're going to get to see a lot more of it soon. Um, hoping to get a trip to the beach, even though we're heading into winter. Um, that, I'm not going to be going in the water. So <laughs> that 
there's no reason to not take this and blast it on some sand dunes and have a little fun with it. Of course, that will require some serious cleaning and rebuilding, you know, almost a complete disassembly because sand gets everywhere and it is very destructive. But I will be doing the fluids first. So I will, uh, I will show you that whole process, the disassembly, and uh, I'm going to have to figure out what table I can work on this. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching.